Can Azure Logic Apps really create a working AI agent that you can chat with? In this demo, I'll show you how to create a conversational agent that can deal cards, shuffle cards, and even decide the winner. Then I'll take it one step further and show you how to embed it inside of your own website. Imagine the possibilities. Let's jump in. Now let's get started creating our first conversational agent in Azure Logic Apps. Now I've logged into the Azure portal and I have pre-created this standard edition Logic App. There's nothing else in here now, just a blank Logic App. And we're gonna go to Workflows and I'm going to add a workflow and I wanna say conversational agent. Now this is in preview, so what you see here might differ slightly from what you see when you're actually going to build this out. And there are some things that might not work as desired since this is in public preview still, so kind of take that with a grain of salt. When you create this, and I'm going to do deck of cards. So we're gonna create a conversational agent for playing the card game high card wins. So all we want it to do is simply say number of players and then deal cards for each of those players. So what you can see here is this went ahead and created our workflow for us. And it starts with start a new chat session here. And then we have our agent. If you've worked with agent loops, you'll be recognize this and be familiar with this interface. Uh, let's click on start a new chat session here. And you'll see here, very similar to like an HTTP interface, this agent URL will be created for us when we save this interface. Uh, we do have to give it a name. So in this case, we're just gonna call this high card wins. And then we wanna give it a description for what this agent is gonna do. I'm just gonna copy in my other description that I have been using. And I if I remember right, I think this description is limited to 80 characters, I believe, which seemed a little bit limiting. So keep that in mind if you are trying to save this and it does give you an error, it might be because your description is too long. So keep that in mind as uh, one thing to look at. So we're gonna leave that like that. And then let's come down here and click on agent. Now, the first thing it's asking me to do here is create a connection. Now. One thing that differs from Agent Loop, and Agent Loop has been updated to support this too, is now rather than, and even though it says Azure OpenAI, it does actually pull these models from Azure AI Foundry. And there's a lot of going on kind of in the AI Foundry space, so I think it's kind of all kind of morphing into one. But it does say OpenAI here, but it is going to be an AI Foundry hosted OpenAI model. So we're going to leave this new connection information here, leave all this information here. I'm going to select my subscription and select my open AI resource. These are pre-created. If you want to go through creating these open AI foundry resources, open AI resources, step-by-step, -step, you can see one of my other videos, the creating agent loop step-by-step -step demo goes through that for you. So for now, I'm going to use my setup in Sweden and go ahead and say, create. It's going to go ahead and create everything for us there. Once that connection is created, you do come here and select deployment model, and I already have an OpenAI ChatGPT5 model created. I'm going to select that. If you do want to create a new model, you can go over here and create create new, and you'll be able to create a new model. Now, I haven't actually tried this, but it should be able to create these models for you. And if you do want to change this connection, you can come down here to change connection. It's a little hard for me to find when I was looking for this earlier. So if you want to connect to a different AI Foundry resource, you can come down here and create a new connection to that. Here's your agent instructions. Let's go ahead and paste in my agent instructions that I've been working with, and we'll talk through them quickly. Now, the one thing that I've noticed when dealing with these chat agents is the agent instructions. I had a first set of these that were very robust and very detailed and asking it to do a lot. Those seem to not work very well. I seem to get a lot of timeouts and stuff talking with the agent. So I simplified it and just have three simple steps here. Again, this is in public preview, so I'd imagine this would be being redefined and be better as we get forward and closer to a general release. So here I have a role, uh, no nonsense, decisive card dealer from Las Vegas, and you're the dealer for the game, high card wins. Provide accurate details on the outcome of the game. And then just three simple steps. You're the dealer, it's always player one. Step two is compute the highest winner. If two cards are the same that are the highest then do a redraw which i have seen before is kind of neat and then step three is to return the winner of the game along with an image of each of the cards and this is all supported by the models that we're going to be working with here advanced parameters here we're going to leave all these the default so i'm going to set everything there now we're going to add two tools to this agent and the first is going to shuffle a deck of cards so i have my favorite independent publisher shuffle new deck cards here 
and we're going to simply give it a description. I'm going to just copy and paste that in here. And this description is just saying, I'm going to shuffle new deck of cards, return deck ID. I am also going to come down here and say deck count, and it defaults to one, but I'm going to set this to one anyways. And click off that, double check here that everything is set correctly, that looks good. I do want to give this a different name, it's more descriptive. And let's just call this shuffle cards. Okay, the next tool we want to add is to deal the cards. So I'm just going to use an HTTP interface. It's going against the same API, but I'm just going to access it via HTTP instead. And I, let's just go ahead and give this a new name right now. And it's going to be deal or draw cards. And let me paste in my description, paste that in. And one thing to note here is I'm not putting a period at the end of this description. I have found some of these fields do not like a period at the end. So just as a rule of thumb, I'm not putting periods at the end of any of these fields as I walk through here. I'm going to do two parameters here. I want a deck ID so that we're all drawing from the same deck. I'm going to call that a string. Again, I'm going to paste in my description. And then I want another parameter here for the number of cards to draw. I'm just going to call this count. And even though it's an in integer, I'm going to define it as a string because I'm going to use this in an HTTP call in just a second and paste in my description here for the number of cards to draw. Now I'm going to come over here to the request URL and this is just the deck of cards API and we're going to pass in two parameters here. The first one is going to be the deck ID which is going to go right here between the two slashes and I'm going to say my deck ID and then the count is going to be at the end so I'm just building my URL call there and this is going to be a get to that call so we'll leave everything else set up here just as the defaults and let's go ahead and save this now so we have our simple chat agent all set up here now to run this we simply can open up this chat window which is new since they released the agent chat and we click on this link and this will give us an interactive chat experience with our workflow that we just created now this is intended for developer purposes and i'll show you in just a moment how we can take this and embed it in a live website using easy auth i'll show you that in just a moment so for now this is our experience with our chat interface with our workflow and i'm just going to come down here and say hi and let's see what the chat agent is going to respond to us. You can see up here on the top, it says high card wins, which was the name of our chat, along with our description, dealer agent for high card wins. So that will be displayed there. And this will give it just a moment and it says, hi, the dealer is gonna be player one, tell me how many players. So let's say, I'm gonna say Steve, John and Jill. And let's go ahead and run that. I can spell Jill correctly. And this does take it just a moment. So I'm going to pause for just a moment and I'll be back when we get some results. Okay. And just like that, we got our response back and you can see by the timestamps here, it took a little over a minute for that to respond. And you can see here it dealt cards for player one and then our three players and the cards dealt for each of those players. So pretty cool here, pretty simple example here of what we're dealing with, but just to give you an idea of how you'd interact with the agent chat. Now let's see how we could embed this into a live website if we wanted, for example. So if you wanted to take this beyond kind of this demo experience and really use it in real life, so expose it to like a customer service agent, for example. So to do that, you need to configure Easy Auth, which there's this nice little link right up here. Click configure Easy Auth. It's gonna jump you right to this page. And Microsoft has made Made this super simple even compared to what this experience was just a few weeks ago so i simply click on add an identity provider you're going to want to want to select microsoft and it's going to pre-select and pre-populate most of these items for you the first thing here is app registration you're going to want to create a new registration you're going to give it a name which is just going to be the name of the logic app you're going to select my expiration i'm going to say the recommended days here I'm going to leave this as the default for single tenant set all these as defaults as well. And then down here, require authentication, all the rest are just gonna be these defaults all the way down. Gonna click add. And this will take it a few moments to create this identity provider. And now what I found is in general, it takes a few minutes for this time to propagate through to the chat experience that we just saw. So I'm gonna give this just a few moments and we're gonna jump back in here once I think this is propagated all the way through. Okay, so let's keep going. I waited about two minutes just to kind of give it some time. I passed runs of this. I went too fast and it didn't seem to work very, very smoothly. So 
just jump back to my designer. Let's go back to our chat. And now that we're back here, you'll see that we no longer see this chat window here. And we have this chat client URL up here. And this is going to be our iframe URL that we're going to use for this. So I am going to click on this and we'll just see what this experience looks like, asking me to log in using the easy auth that we configured. And here's a iframe hosted version of that same chat session. So this is something that now you could share with others in your enterprise and they would be able to log in and authenticate against this and then be able to work with the same agent that we just created. But let's go ahead and take this one step further and let's go ahead and embed this in a website. So I'm going to grab this iframe URL here and this is just my iframe code. And it's nothing special here. I've got this set up for my website. I'm just going to copy that in there and now I'm going to grab this block of code and I'm going to paste this in my website and I'm going to update that and I'm going to be back in just a moment. Okay, I've got that embedded into my website now just on stephenwthomas.com slash agent chat. And let's jump in there and take a look at what this looks like. And here's our iframe that's displaying our same chat interface that we saw in our uh, Microsoft Azure portal. So this is uh, displaying that interface. So if this was something beyond this demo scenario, instead of high card wins, if this was access to assisting with order fulfillment or editing customer records, we'd be able to now securely host that agent in our own web application. So we could give this access to others to be able to get in here and access this agent. And let's just take a look at what we had here. I'm just gonna say hi again. I won't actually run it because it takes a few moments, but we'll just simply say hi. And you see it does say Stephen W. Thomas because I am authenticated against this interface. And again, now we're gonna get a similar welcome message saying, hey, we're gonna play high card against the dealer. So kind of what we went through here is using the new conversational agent in Azure Logic Apps to set up a conversational agent. We ran that demo agent using the Azure portal. And then we actually took that and hosted it in our own custom website as an iframe and giving secure access into that agent that we just created. So again, this was a trivial example using a deck of playing cards. But so hopefully you can see the value of this of building this out to give that true interaction between your customer service representatives or others in your organization into those Logic App agents. Thank you for taking a look at this video. If you'd like to learn more about Azure Agent Loops, go ahead and follow this step-by-step -step video where in 30 minutes, I'll take you through your journey of creating your very first Logic App Agent Loop. Thank you, and don't forget to like and subscribe.